Welcome back to the studio, everybody. Hope you're all doing well, making lots of cool music, having a good time in the studio. I definitely am, especially yesterday. We had such an amazing session that I wanted to take a few minutes to show you what we did, explain how we did it, and why we did it. It was just, oh man, what a day yesterday. Uh, it was a band called Bleeding Harp. They're a blues rock band based out of LA here, full of amazing musicians. But the best part is we tracked everything 100% live, including vocals. It was all live, cut straight off the floor, and it sounds amazing. And I want to kind of show you that today to show you how good you can isolate stuff and maybe you could try doing some more live recordings with your own bands and stuff at home. So first off, the band is Paul Vallis on vocals and harp, Jeff Coleman on guitar and vocals, Jeff Marshall on guitar and vocals, Lau Tizer on the organ. Yesterday there was a guest on bass. Rick Fierra Bracci was sitting in for Kevin Chown, who's over in Europe touring with Tarja. And we had the fantastic, amazing Doug Pinnock singing vocals. If you guys know King's X, you'll know what I'm talking about. It was just an amazing group of guys. So we decided to cut it live. Because why not? You've got amazing musicians like that. It's a cover of Whipping Post which is a really cool tune. And I think the vibe that we got from everybody playing live was worth the trouble of the setup. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play you a little bit of the track so you can hear it, and then I'm gonna solo up a few things to show you how minimal the bleed actually is on this. All right, here we go. That, that's the track. And what you're hearing is exactly what our tracking tones were. It's playback. I am doing nothing else to the tracks. That's as they were recorded at that moment. So all the lights, everything you see here on the console, this was our recording setup. I'm not doing anything more to it at all. Tracking only. In the live room, the only thing that we didn't cut actually live in the room was bass. We decided to go direct and then have the option of reamping later because the boominess of the bass, you know, the way it kind of fills a room, has a tendency to bleed into all the mics everywhere. And we didn't want to deal with that hassle. I didn't want to have to try to filter that out later. So Rick has a great sounding Padula bass. As, you know, it's a great bass player. He knows how to get a sound out of it. And we went through a JDI, I think a radial uh, DI, and straight into the Trident and then a little warm audio compression. And that was it. Now Doug was in the control room with me, so we, the, we had the vocals in here singing. But other than that, in the live room, we had three amps and a Leslie. Both Jeffs had amps. Paul had an amp for his harmonica, and Lau had a, you know, a Leslie hooked up to his organ. And it's all live, and then 11 tracks on the drums. As a musician, that's great because you could take a headphone off. You could still hear, you know, bass and vocals here and get an idea, but everything else you had in the room is just like you're used to hearing it as a band playing live. So you had that energy of that, which as a player is a, is a great way to do it. You're not just hearing things here in the headphones. Let's check out, let's start listening to what we got here. I'm gonna sew up the overheads and let's check out our bleed uh, with what was going on in the overhead mics. A little harp, a little guitar. It's really minimal though. I mean, it actually sounds like it's really far away. Unlike a lot of live recordings, especially if you're on a stage or if you set things up too close to each other where your overheads are now guitar mics as well. We wanted to make sure we avoided that. 
However, we also didn't want to try to block everything off to the point where it was completely, completely isolated. That was not our goal. Our goal was to mitigate bleed and leave it live. It just happened to work really, really well. I could EQ these overheads to taste and it's not gonna affect my guitar tone. Yes, if I solo the overheads and I start pushing 5K or something, am I gonna hear the guitar change in the overhead mics? Yeah, but it sounds so far away that once we pull it back into everything, you'll never know that. And it won't affect my guitar tone whatsoever. That's how well we were able to isolate things. Now the drums were in the corner and the amps were on both sides of the drums. And it, basically I had my real trap panels just in between those amps and the drums. Amps facing out into the room, and that was it. Nothing else, nothing else. I did have carpet over underneath both the amps, carpet underneath the drums. I also had carpet underneath Lau, where he had his Leslie, you know, just to kill anything coming off the floor. Let's go to the guitars. Now, guitars, we had two amps on each, or two mics on each amp on Jeff Marshall at a 57 and an Audio Technica A3000. And on Jeff Coleman, I had a 57 and an MXL 144 ribbon mic. So here's our guitars. <laughs> So right there, not a lot of bleed. You're really hearing a lot of like the cymbals, the top end of the cymbals and stuff, which could probably get filtered out without actually affecting the guitar tone. Now oh, let's go to the organ. Let's hear a little bit of what Lau's doing. All right, let me find a spot with some organ. Here we go. <laughs> Same thing a little bit there in the organ. We definitely have some cymbal bleed coming up. And there's a little bit, you can kind of hear the thump of that kick drum a little bit. But again, it's very distant, not really messing with the organ tone too much. Probably could also filter out some of that cymbal stuff on the top without affecting our organ sound. But again, that would be a choice where we get in the mix. If maybe on some of the organ parts that start to bump up, if, if I hear it affecting the cymbals, then I might do it. But if I don't, I probably wouldn't go filter it. I wouldn't do it just to do it, if that makes sense. Now, harp, let's get to Paul. Now, Paul, where we had him placed in the room, is basically in opposite corners from the drums. That way, when he's holding the harp and the microphone is here, the back of the microphone is facing the drummer. And that was how we tried to mitigate that bleed as much as we could. We didn't have Paul behind any sort of baffle. We did have his amp that was on the floor behind one baffle, and it was pointed kind of away from where the drums and other guitars were. We hear more organ bleed in Paul's, and that's because we're loud. I'm Sorry, if you see me like pointing that way, it's because the live room, I'm still looking at where we had the baffle set up. But Lau and Paul were both back closer to the wall that by me in the control room. And Lau's Leslie is facing open towards him, which is facing across the room towards where Paul was. And then Paul's amp was kind of facing back towards Lau. So there's a little bit more bleed coming from, from that end. But again, I'm going to follow the same rule and everything else. When it's in the mix... I'm probably not going to change that too much unless it becomes an issue. Vocal. We, gotta, we can't do this without hearing this vocal. Doug Pinnock, one of my favorite singers of all time. Just so much charisma and character in that voice. This, he's in the control room with me going through an SM7B getting hammered. I mean hammered by a Warm Audio 1176. And that was a lot because he kept asking for more. He's like, man, compress me a bunch. He goes, squash me. You know, make it sit right there. I'm like, okay. And I kept doing it. He goes, yeah, a little more. A little, yeah, okay. And I'm like, all right, cool. I mean, we're just hammering that thing. But he sounds awesome. I've been run down. I've been lied to. And I don't know why I let that mean woman make me out a fool. 
She took all my money, wrecked my new car. Now she's with one of my good time buddies, drinking in some cross town bar. Sometimes I feel. So that is, that's the setup. That is our tracking tones. Again, what you're seeing here with the lights, all of this stuff is just where it was when we finished tracking and I ran off a master off the console or uh, the, the rough mix off the console. Not doing anything else for you guys today. That's what it sounded like tracking. So here's my challenge to you. Whether you ultimately want to record this way or not, try it. Because at the very least, it's going to teach you about how to make instruments work together and how to deal with bleed, which is going to make it even better when you don't have the bleed. But you just might find that the energy from people in a room and having some of that stuff bleed into others is way more worth it than having complete isolation. It's not about making this stuff perfect. And I think this whole chase for perfection is way overrated. I want character. And I want energy of people and human beings. As you can see, I'm still excited. We had, it was so much fun yesterday. We really only did three actual takes with Doug and that was it you know we did a bunch of setup of course and some test runs but it was just that so try it give it a shot record live use whatever baffles you can you have or you can make you know block it off and get together man and play some music together anyway guys that's it thanks for joining me I'll see you guys later have a good time recording bye